Hey, you don't have to bother with that. I'll do it. It's all right, Ron. I can manage. Thank you. Right, well, I'll just get rid of me Grundies and I'll be back to give you a hand. Ron, you've uh, hoovered the living room twice. You've polished all the door handles. You've even put a fresh toilet roll on the dispenser. I think I'm beginning to get the message. What message would that be? Look, don't think it isn't appreciated, but... Didn't think for a minute it wasn't, mate. What time do you want me out of the way, then? Uh, what is there something else I can do? Ron, um... Molly's coming here for lunch today, so we can make arrangements for our future. Yeah, well, I thought that's what it might be. There's a lot to discuss, of course. Redecorating for a start. Clearly, this place would benefit from a woman's touch. Wouldn't we all? And if Molly's going to be living here, she's entitled to have a say in all that. Choice of wallpaper, that kind of thing. Hang on, Bing, there's no rushes there. Well, we've decided there's no point in waiting. What, you and Molly are going to be living here over the brush? In a mature, sharing and open relationship, yes. Yeah, yeah, but, well, you know, I just thought that you'd take your time, you know, sort things out with Jean and that. Well, uh, nothing's definite yet, of course, but uh, I think Molly will be coming here sooner rather than later. Oh? Well, it'll be cosy then, won't it? Just the three of us. <laughs> Just the two of us, Ron. Molly and myself. I'm afraid you and I are going to have to go our separate ways, old son. I see. So, um... How soon are we talking, then? What? A couple of months? Ron. I know this has all been very difficult for you. And obviously the last thing I want is for you to be out on the street, but... I really think you ought to start looking for something as soon as possible. I know you wouldn't want to stand between me and my future happiness, would you, old son? Hmm? So, we going into town then? Yeah, I want to get some new trainers at me, Oh. Yeah. Cheers. All right, then, mate. Yeah, thanks. I just got my jacket coat. I know you from somewhere. Yeah, don't know. I don't think so. You work for Renfrew's Building Supplies, don't you? Er, uh, well, I might do. Yeah, you do. I never forget a face, me. Come out with your missile bus. You load and unload the wagons, don't you? Er, uh, yeah, but I've got to get off anyway, mate. Yeah, I've seen you loading the wagons. Oh, right. Maybe I'll see you down there next time. I'm sure you will. Thanks for bailing me out there. Yeah. See ya. Yeah, see ya. What's with 20 question, God? I don't know. Keep your eye out for him if I was you. The creep. He sounds like he's on to you. Nah, he's just another scally builder. He won't knock off here next week. You hope. Anyone home? All right, Pops. No, I'm not all right. The situation normal, then, is it? Can you come in? Is our Jacqueline in? No, she's off on some freebie food tasting thing with one of our clients. It is safe to come in, you know. Aye, all right. So, what's brought you down here, then? Don't really know. It's just that yesterday I ended up having a big art to art with Jackie Corker, and she made me think a bit, you know, about how life's too short for family fallouts and all that. Nice one. So you've come to make the peace with our Jackie, then? As I say, I'm not really sure. I suppose I just wanted to see how the land lies. But that I wouldn't worry too much, you know. I reckon she's well prepared to meet you in the middle. Why well, has she said anything? Plenty. Well, it's not really for me to say, but she was really upset after the argument in the garage, you know. Oh. And she wants to really make it up to you. She's dead upset about what happened with this place. Yeah, and so she should be, you know. I was stitched up like a kipper, wasn't I? <sighs> Come on, Dad, don't be too hard on her. Well, this thing is going to drag on forever unless you sort it out. Yeah. Anyway, I tried. Well, do you want me to tell her to call around the bungalow when she comes in? There might not be a lot of point there, son. I could well be walking the streets by then. Where's that? 
David Crosby. That fine, upstanding, decent, warm-hearted Christian that he is, is throwing me out. Are you joking? Wish I was, son. He's moving that Molly one in, so there's no room for me. Things just seem to be going from bad to worse. So, if you heard of any cardboard boxes going spare, put me name on them, will you? Excuse me. Ah, oh, sorry to disturb you. That's OK. What can I do for you? I'm David Crosby from the bungalow over the way. I was wondering if it was possible for you to give me a quote on some work I'm thinking of having done. No problem. We always say. No job too small. Oh, good, good. Nice little place, that. Not thinking of selling, are you? No. No, I don't think so. Shame. Might have been interested myself. Shown its age a bit, but nothing a few improvements wouldn't sort out. Right. Here you go. Greg Shadwick. Just let me finish unloading in, I'll be over. Won't oh. take me long. Right. Well, that's splendid. Thanks very much. I'll see you in a minute. No problem. Hi. How's things? Fine, Max. How are you? OK. You're not going to tell me, are you? Tell you what? About how we went last night with Molly. Max. Would you mind not yelling it across the close? I don't want the whole neighbourhood knowing my business. You know, I had no idea things were so serious between you two. Well, they are. We're trying to make a real go of it. David, you are sure about this, aren't you? I've never been sure, or why? Well, you know what they say, marry in haste, repent at leisure. I'm not getting married. Oh, you know what I mean. I'm just concerned, that's all. Well, you needn't be. I'm sure Molly and I will be very happy. The little one round here stops trying to put a damper on things. I don't know, look at the prairie. We'll have to stick a sign outside the door saying, Abandon all hope, all ye who enter here. Mm -hmm. oh, Mama, can I lift my arms up? Oh, well, go on, you go up then. Look, you'll feel better soon, I promise. Uh, it's Max, love. No, uh, sorry. Right, uh, feeling rough? It's this flu. We're all chopping like flies. Don't come too near, Max. Right, well, I won't stay too long. Um, look, I'm sorry to descend on you whilst you're ill, but it's about the fence again. I caught Tim going through it yesterday. <sighs> I'm sorry. I can only apologise. Look, get it repaired and we'll cover the bill. Oh, no, there's no need. No, he's already given me the cash. Um, uh, £20. Oh, right. Yeah, well, he said he was getting some bonuses, you know, for doing overtime and... Well, th that's not the reason why I came round. I really wanted to tell you about his attitude. He, he was really quite insolent. I thought you ought to know. Yeah, well, thanks, Max. You did the right thing. Yeah, leave it with us, we'll get it sorted. Right, well, um, OK. <laughs> I hope you feel better soon. See you out. Look, I'm sorry, Simba. I don't want this getting out of hand, but if he damages any of my property again, I'll take the matter further, I'm afraid. Yeah, all right, Max, thanks. Uh, I'll see to it. OK. Coming. Max, come in. Oh, looks very inviting. Well, you know what they say. Make a bit of effort, shows you care. Molly must be a very lucky lady. Oh, David, what I was saying earlier, I didn't mean to offend you. I just don't want to see you hurt. I know. I'm, I just overreacted a bit, that's all. I'm afraid living with Ron and his constant jibes is maybe rather sensitive, but Max, really, you mustn't worry about me. I can't remember the last time I felt so happy. I mean, finding someone that I want to share my life with, it, it's extraordinary after everything went so sour with Jean. We all need somebody, don't we? And Molly is the one for you, then, eh? She is. Oh. Um, have you mentioned anything to Patricia? I shall tell her everything she needs to know when the time is ripe. Do you think she'll approve? Oh, I hope she'll have the good grace to be happy for me. Oh, I'm sure she will. As you well know, Jean and I always brought her up to be independent, go her own way. So, I can vouch for that. I really do hope it works out successfully for you both. And I know Susanna would say the same. We'll never forget how you helped us when Matthew and Emily died. It would have been a lot harder to get through it without your support. 
And even though you're not officially my father-in-law anymore, well, we'll always be there for you if you need us. Thank you, Max. That's very decent of you. I wouldn't have expected anything less of you. Yeah. Right, well, I better be off. Um, enjoy your lunch together. I'm sure we will. And the rest of our lives. I thought you were going to work. Work on wait. How are you feeling? Totally ashamed. I felt horrible having to stand there and listen to that Max Farnham going on about our Tim. I've tried to keep him out of trouble. I really have. I know you have, love. You can't go blaming yourself, can you? But I'm his mum. At some time, I must have done something drastically wrong. It's him letting you down, love, not the other way round. Well, I don't feel like that. I've got reason to worry, haven't I? He's definitely getting money from somewhere. Well, he has been doing a lot of OVs lately. I'm getting tips here and there. Oh, sin. You're as suspicious as I am, aren't you? We've only got his way to go by. I thought he was sorting himself out before all this started up again. If he's back to his old tricks, well, it's not only his life he's going to be screwing up, it's going to affect all of us, isn't it? I know you've been patient with him, but I can't expect you to keep putting up with him forever. <sighs> Are you worried about me getting off? Oh, yeah, I am. Oh, don't be all right. Oh, you're a star, you know. No, I'm not. Anyway, I can see a side of it, too. I, mean, I know what it's like being a lad and growing up with what looks like no future. No one having any faith in you or believing in you. I was a no hope myself for years. And I got involved in a few things that I shouldn't have. But I've lived to tell a tale, haven't I? Yeah. I'm still worried about him, though. I mean, he hasn't exactly led a trouble-free life, has he? You know, he's been off the rails more than once. Yeah, but we don't know that he has for sure this time, though, do we? Look, I'll have a word with him, OK? See what comes of it. Yeah. I don't know about a loft conversion without getting up into the roof space and having a gander. I'm not exactly wedded to the idea of creating an upstairs. Well, it depends which walls are low burn in the end. We'll be using RSJs otherwise. I'd say the ensuite looks famous. Really? Do you think so? I hadn't actually considered the idea of anything as elaborate as that. Well, for the stars, it'd be a cheaper option. Now you don't need your second bedroom anymore. We could knock through there. That'd give you enough space for your master bedroom. Stick a new door in there for your bathroom. <coughs> All right, mate. All right. You didn't waste a lot of time, did you? <sighs> Ron. Have I suddenly become invisible or what? I am still here, you know. You might have waited for me to pack before you bulldoze me room. There's no need to react like that. Don't worry, I'm not stopping. I'll get out your way. Thanks, babe. You feeling any better? Not really, no. I hope that isn't that Max Farnham again. Right, Mum. What can I do for you, mate? Yeah, well, I was here in the kitchen. Actually, sir, it's a bit awkward. Uh, I'm going to have to think about putting the rent up on this place. You are? I'm sorry, mate. Well, how much are you thinking of putting it up by? Well, I know it sounds a bit steep, like, but I can't see it being less than 100 a month. How much? I think you've found the cure for the flu, Ron. Another 100 pounds a month for this, but it's not worth it. I mean, we might as well have a mortgage and be paying that much in rent. Well, if you think you're going to have to move out, will you try and let us know by next week? <sighs> Look, if you're that desperate for cash, Ron, why don't you think about selling the place? That'd sort it out, wouldn't it? Well, yeah, that would, but I'd have to find a buyer sharpish. Otherwise, it could be on the market for over a year. That'd be no good to me, would it? Yeah, no, um. But you'd settle for a quick sale, wouldn't you? Well, yeah. But that's all well and good in theory, but house buyers don't grow on trees. So if um, someone was to make you an offer for a quick sale, well, that might be an option, mightn't it? Well, of course it would, but... Why are you offering? I might just be, yeah. Same? Yeah, well, I know we'd have to talk about it and all that. Well, it's well worth looking into, isn't it? I mean, it might be the best move for all of us. Molly, hello. 
My goodness. The place looks suspiciously tidy. Well, I do have very high standards, you know. It's important to keep up appearances. <laughs> that must be difficult living with Ron. Well, not today it hasn't been, actually, no. He's made a real effort. Been cleaning up all morning. Hmm, doesn't sound like the one we both know and love. No, exactly. It's made me feel rather guilty, really. After all these weeks of being completely uncooperative, he's suddenly become this model lodger. Why? Well, because with uh, you moving in, I thought it best if Ron moves out, you know. It wouldn't really make much sense otherwise, would it? Ron Dixon being under the same roof as us. I'll be the recipe for a happy relationship. Yeah, David, I know um... it sounds a bit harsh, but he has been forewarned, and well, there's no way around it, really. David, just hang on a minute, will you? I will... Hello, Molly. Now, oh, don't worry, don't worry, I'm not stopping. Come to inspect the plans for the new West Wing, have you? I've only come for lunch, Ron. Yes, yes, I know you have, and uh, don't worry, I'll be off. Didn't mean to disturb you. Ron, please. I'm going. I'm sure Molly here will make herself at home. After all, that's what you're after, isn't it? A nice, comfy home. I suggest you leave now. Yeah, well, that's your answer to everything, isn't it? Well, I suggest that you keep your hand on your apney. Sorry about that. Well, we'll just uh, carry on, shall we? I'll, I'll get you a drink. They look expensive. They were. But they cost more than two weeks' wages. Yeah. Or a week's worth of dropsies off the wagon drivers. And I believe you thousands wouldn't. Including Max next door, by the way. He was round here before about you. Oh, he hasn't been moaning again, has he? Yes, he has. And there's a chance I might be buying this place, so the last thing I need is a mad feud with the neighbours, understand? Sinbad, look at me. I've got a new job, new gear. I'm able to pay my own way round here. I'm not going to screw up now that things are going so well for me, am I? Well, I'll just have to take your word for it, won't I? But I've got my eye on you, right? Don't worry, I know. Your dead or our face, Joe? Who? Me. <laughs> I'm sorry you had to be subjected to all that nonsense from Ron. I hope it hasn't spoiled your day. No, of course not. I know what he's like. So do I. That's why I want him out of here before you move in. David, look, please don't take this the wrong way, but this is the first I've heard about me moving in here with you. I'm not exactly sure it's what I had in mind. No, of course, I understand that, Molly. I'm well aware this place needs sprucing up. For a start, I was going to consult you about some changes to the wallpaper. I'm not just talking about wallpaper. No, no, of course not. Neither am I. I in fact, today, I was talking to a builder about how best to develop the property. I thought that if we knocked through into Ron's room, we could have a really lovely master bedroom. And if I put a door through into the bathroom, we could be en suite as well. David, please, just slow down. I don't know where you got the idea that I was moving in here with you. But I thought that this would be a more comfortable place to live than where you're living now. I'm perfectly happy living in my own house. I've no intention of moving in here with you. How are you feeling, love? Lousy. I can't sleep. Tim back then. I've had a word. He's on the straight and narrow. Don't sound too sure. I think we should just keep a careful eye on him. Hopefully, he'll prove me wrong. So, um, have you been given any thought to buying this place? Uh, yeah, I have. And the more I think about it, the more it makes sense. I mean, I've got over 30 grand in the building society. Yeah, but that's yours. I haven't got that kind of money to throw around. It doesn't matter, does it? Oh, Sin, you've done so much for me and the rest of the family. You'd even stood by us through all Tim's nonsense. But I can't help thinking it's all going one way. All the effort and now all the money. I don't want you worrying yourself. Well, I can't help it. I don't want anything to spoil what we've got. Well, if you buy this place, well, that's it. You're stuck with us. And we're not exactly the dream family. I know that. <sighs> Carl, you know where I grew up, don't you? In one children's home after another. Always looking at the other kids with their normal families, normal homes, 
the mum and dad. And a washing line that doesn't have 30 other kids' clothes hanging from it. All I've ever wanted is someone to love who loves me and a real family to be a part of. Anyway, seems mad paying rent forever, doesn't it? We've got enough for a good-sized deposit. All we need is a smallish mortgage. And then that's you and me sorted with a house of our own. Oh, Sin. I think it's lovely you want to make this huge commitment to me and the kids. Just as long as you don't feel like we're scrounging off you or we're a burden to you. Look, I know we've been down a bit of a rocky road together. But most of that was down to your Tim, wasn't it? And he said himself he's going to try and get his life together, so let's give him the benefit of the doubt, eh? Look, after the knocks we've taken, you've got no idea what it'd mean to me to settle down in a lovely house and the love of a gorgeous fella. Mm. <laughs> I couldn't ask for anything else. Except the cure for the flu, eh? <laughs> yeah. So come on, then. What are we going to do? Are we going to buy this house off run? Why not? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. David, I've really taken the wind out of your sails, haven't I? No. I should have had the sense to talk things through with you instead of blundering blindly on like that. I honestly thought the two of us living here would be the right thing. I know how fond you are of this place. But you have rented it out quite a lot over the years, haven't you? Yes, I suppose I have rather lost my ties with it. So you think living in your house would be the best thing for us? I am very attached to it. I know that when we're both living there together, it'll soon feel homely and welcoming. But the close isn't such a bad place to live, is it? David, I know how hard it is for you to contemplate leaving. It is a big step, Molly. I know it is. I know. I know how hard it is, me asking you to give up so much. It's just that it would mean such a lot to me if... if you would come and share my house with, with all my familiar things as well as my life. It really would make me very happy. You really mean that, don't you? David, I want to be with you. But if we're going to spend the rest of our lives together, you're going to have to leave Brookside Close. Coming up next, if you know nothing of teenage girls, get ready to be initiated into the rituals of a pyjama party. Cherry Aid, chocolate, and a slightly shell-shocked Keith Burnley witting stall. TV dinners, here on four. You were all geared up for Molly moving in. Ah, well, we've um, had some more discussion on that subject, Tulsa. And we've decided to live in her house. You what? Yes, which means that I'm going to be putting this bungalow on the market as soon as possible. Then what are you talking about? You can't sell the bungalow. You're going to burn all your bridges. You'll have nothing to fall back on in case anything goes wrong. <laughs> well, that's assuming that you're right about Molly. But you're not, are you? See you later. Bye bye. Bing. I'm just trying to help. That's all, mate. I don't want to see your soul down the river. 
can't believe me dad condescended to come into the bar after all this time. And I wasn't even here to see him. Yeah, you well built himself up for it. He was really knocked when you weren't here. And it really sounds like he wants to kiss and make up. Well, maybe that's putting it a little bit too strongly. He just wanted to come in, see you, have a chat, see how the land lay. Yeah, well, even that's a major climb down for me, Dad. Well, it's like thinking of it as a step forward, not so much a climb down. Well, whatever it is, just that we can sort things out and get back to normal. Yep, I'll vote for that. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah. I'll also bring your post down from the flat. A couple of them looked important. Oh, Grace, thanks. Right, so just go and get them mixes. Cheers. There's a final demand on the lecky bill there. Hmm, I'll get that off today. And one from the bank, looks like. Very good. That's pleasant for me, Dad. Wonder what this one is? Oh, it's from the antenatal clinic. God, Jackie, can't get used to hearing you say things like that. I'm used to hearing you say, let's go out on Friday and get bladdered. <laughs> it's my appointment day for next week. That's when they're giving me first scan. Really? Well, it won't hurt, will it? Well, no one says it will. I read that they just cover your belly in jelly and then rub this sand thing over it. Oh, sounds disgusting. Do you think so? Well, I was hoping you might offer to come with me. What? Well, once you get your belly jellied? I just don't fancy going on my own, that's all. Well, shouldn't it be the farms that go with you? Yeah, I suppose so. But I'm not sure if I want Max here. It's a bit embarrassing. Well, why don't you just make up the minds for them? Tell them you only want Susanna to go with you. Yeah, I could, couldn't I? Molly, I'm so sorry to be late. I was beginning to think I've been stood up. <laughs> Listen, we'd better get on, otherwise a couple behind us will be catching up if we oh, don't. Absolutely, yes, let's crack on. I'm afraid Ron's been up to his usual tricks. And I found myself completely distracted by the wretched man. I told him that we've been talking about my moving out of the bungalow. Oh, yes. So what did you tell him? Well, having had a little while to get used to the idea, I, I told him that if you were still agreeable, I'd be selling the bungalow and moving into your house. It's up to you, you know, David. Is that what you really want? Molly, as long as we're together, I'd be happy in a mud hut. Oh, finished doing the crosswords, have you? I was reading the sports page, not doing the crosswords. Oh, you lead a sad life, you. Listen, Mike, um, I've got a favour to ask. Yeah, go ahead, boy. Well, I want to go and sort things out with my dad, so will you come round with me? You're going to go round there? Well, we can't carry on the way we have been. I mean, it's weeks since we had the bus stuff. How would I feel if he has another arse attack and dies? Or what if something happened to me? Will he come? Yeah, all right, so long as I don't have to play referee and split you two up. I'm sick of fighting with him. I mean, I know he's got his reasons, but to let it drag on for this long... Yeah, I know. Oh, um, do you think I should ring him first? Yeah, well, I would. I wouldn't just turn up. And anyway, apparently, he keeps having to make himself scarce so Bing can entertain this Molly one. Oh, great. That means he'll be in a really good mood. Yeah, and it's going to get a lot worse. Bing's going to move her in permanently, so that means my dad reckons he's going to be out on his ear. Oh, mm, coffee. Yes, please. <laughs> Who was that on the phone earlier? Jackie. Mm -hmm. She's going to be popping round later. Mm. She's got the date of her scan. Oh, <laughs> that's great. When? End of next week. Uh, Won't that be wonderful? Mm. We'll be able to see our baby. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a minute. What, uh, did she say it was all right for us to go? She said... She'd be really pleased if I'd go with her. Those were her exact words. Well, that's wonderful, <laughs> isn't it? I mean, it'd be great, won't it? Seeing the baby. Well, our baby. It'll be magic. Oh, dear. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. You won't be able to come. Why not? I mean, it's my baby, too. Well, she specifically asked for just me. Now, I know you'd love to go, Max, but look at it from her point of view. It will all be rather... We're intimate, won't it? But I'll tell you everything that happens and I'll bring you back a photograph, I promise, but what you have to make do with that. Now, do you want that coffee? Find your ball, Molly. Well done. I'm in the bunker, am I? 
Now, a bit of a near miss, but um, got a pretty decent lie. Thank you. David, are you sure about living with me? Absolutely sure. I'm completely sold on the idea. It's just that, you know, when you've been across to see me... Well, I mean, that little house is not exactly palatial. Who needs a palace? And you're not worried about leaving your friends behind on the close? I'm not devoted to the close, Molly. I only moved there in the first place to be near Patricia. Now that she and the grandchildren are halfway around the world in Canada... It's just that... I want you to be sure that making such a big change in your life is the right thing for you. I know my own mind, believe me. I've reached a point in my life when I've got the confidence to trust my own judgment and my own feelings. And the more I get to know you, the more I feel like a man has been given a second chance. <laughs> the only thing that matters to me, my darling, is that you should be happy. And if you're happy, I'm happy. <laughs> Something smells good. Yeah, I've, uh, I've got a pan of scouts on. Um, oh, Michael said that you called in the bars to see me. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Oh, come on, Dad. Jackie's trying to make up here. You're not exactly rolling out the red carpet, are you? Dad, I don't want us to carry on the way we have been. Not talking and being horrible to each other. I know I've upset you loads, but honestly, I never meant to. I'll always be grateful for what you did for me. You got a funny way of showing it then, Jack. Cut me out of the business like you did. Dad, don't forget the pressure the Finnegan's put on us and Barry Grant. I promise you, if I'd had any choice, there's no way I'd have done what I did. They got a lot to answer for, them crooks. You can say that again. You two used to love coming home from school to a palace house. <laughs> so did our Tony. It was his favourite. Jack, I've already lost one child. I don't want to live the rest of my life without you and all. I've only got one dad, and I don't want to lose you either. So you're going to make a choice then? Looks like it. <sighs> Let's just try and put it all behind us now, eh? <laughs> Uh, didn't you say you had something for me, Dad, Jack? Uh, yeah, yeah, I've, I've got some paperwork here. It's dead straightforward. Um, it's for the account I opened in your name, and there's the balance of what's in there now. Five thousand eight hundred quid? Can you open one of them for me as well, sis? Behave. Um, and so that you don't have to have any hassle, I've got a cash card for you and all. Um, Pin numbers on that slip there. You can just draw out what you need whenever you want it. I'll just keep putting the 400 pounds in there every week. Oh, and if you want me to pay Cassie the money you owe for the petrol the other day, well, that's fine. I can do that today. Save you any embarrassment. You just don't understand anything, do you? Yeah, I do. I owe you, Dad, and this way I can pay you back, and you don't have to be embarrassed by being broke. I'm not some little old man that needs help on across the street, you know. I put money into your business because I love you. Because you're my daughter. And because I thought that I could be a good partner. I don't want your charity, Jackie. Dad, you've got no money. And whose fault is that? Jacqueline, you owe me £50,000. I don't want it paid back at £400 a week. And anyway, what guarantee have I got that you'll be able to keep these payments up? I will, Dad, I promise you. Oh, yeah, right. Your position depends on what side of the bed Barry Grant gets out of a morning. And what happens if he decides he doesn't want you to run the bar anymore? Cos he can, you know, Jackie. It's his now. He could do it tomorrow. What then? Oh, yeah, but he won't. Listen, I stuck my neck out for you. But you're not prepared to do the same for me, are you? Now, if you really believed in yourself and that bar, you'd take a loan out and pay me in full now. So I've got some security. Dad, you know I can't do that. Look, I wish it could be different, but it can't. Whatever you think now, I'm going to keep putting this money into this account for you. So maybe one day, when you've actually managed to swallow your pride, you might want to use it. That, that was a bit harsh, money. it? 
suppose you're going to walk out with me now and all, aren't you? No. What is going on with you two? Why can't you sort this out? You tell me, son. See yourself out, will you? You better play it through. Don't want to hold you up. So, have you told Max that you were thinking of moving away from the close? No. No, not yet. I'm sure he'll be fine. I just wanted to be absolutely certain that I'd thought everything through first. You see, it's not just a question of moving house. Let's face it, Molly, if I move away and live with you, I want to do it properly. I want to make the most of every minute we spend together. What exactly have you got in mind? Well, I think it's very important that we start with a completely blank page. Financially, we'll be secure. I know we've talked about selling the bungalow, and there's always my pension to throw into the pot, but I want to devote as much time and energy as possible to our relationship. And that means that it's vital that I take a back seat at the petrol station. Oh, David, are you sure? I think you've put so much hard work into making that a success. Well, what better time to step away from the day-to-day -day running of a business than when it's truly thriving? I know it'd be stupid to give up the franchise now, but I can easily put in a manager. And that'd leave us free to do whatever we want with our days. I'm so lucky to have found you, David. Well, I don't see why we should wait any longer. I mean, if you're really convinced we're doing the right thing, well, why don't we just get on with it? You move out of your bungalow and, and move in with me as soon as you can. How on earth could I refuse such a wonderful offer? <laughs> Are you staying for the plate of scouts? Eh, uh, no, I'm gonna get back to work. Couldn't do us a favour, could you, son? Lend us 20 quid so I can pay Cassie what I owe her. <sighs> this is mad. Oh, Jackie said she'd sort that out for you. Here you go. Thanks. So what are you planning on living on, Dad? Yeah, well, I can manage without Jackie, thanks, son. Look, this isn't common knowledge yet, but I've decided to put our house up for sale. Sinbad's interested. Bing wants me out of this place pretty sharp, so I'll have to make sure I'm not left out in the cold or short of cash. Dad, you don't have to sell the house to get by. Jackie's just put six grand on an account for you. If our Jacqueline wants to keep putting money into an account, then good luck to her. Because I won't be touching it. Sure you won't stay? Um, no, I'll be getting off. See you, son. Um, yeah, see you, Dad. that Molly one. Oh, yes, they seem to be hitting it off, don't they? You can say that again. Big style. That's the problem. And why? I don't know. Maybe it's not my place to comment. Well, I think you should if you think it's important. I know me and Bing have had our ups and downs, but I do like him, Max. I mean, he's a decent fellow at heart, and I'd hate to stand by and watch him being suckered by air. Why do you think she's going to sucker him? Well, you've probably heard that they're planning to live together. Mm hmm but did you know that he's going to move out and live in air, please? No, they're going to live together in the bungalow. Ah, well, that's where you're wrong, see. He's selling the bungalow. Well, he certainly hasn't told us that, but surely he's entitled to live where he likes. Yeah, but she lives in this little old shoebox that's not worth half as much as the bungalow. So? Maxie, work it out, son. If he sells the bungalow, he's going to be quite a rich fellow, isn't he? Quite a nice catch. I guess if David's planning to sell, that'll mean that you'll soon be homeless. That wouldn't be at the heart of your concerns, would it? I'll treat that suggestion with the contempt it deserves. I have survived on my own before, remember? Maxie, all I'm saying is, there's something not right about that Molly, believe me. I narrowly escaped being taken for a mug by him myself. Sounds like sour grapes, Ron. No way, Maxie, I've been there. And the next minute, she's all over Bing like a rash. 
sniffing at his wallet. You genuinely think David needs protecting from this woman? I think he needs protecting from himself. She's a very persuasive woman, is that Molly? And hey, this is your kid's inheritance that she's after, you know. You want to have a word with him, Maxie? Try and get him to think again. Before she takes him for every penny he's got. All right, Cassie. Come to pay off my IOU. Well, there was no need to come in specially. Any time would have done. No, no, I don't like that hanging over me. <laughs> I know, I'm the same. I always think what would happen if I got run down by a bus. I couldn't rest in my grave knowing I still owed money. Yeah. It's like they say, innit? You can't take your money with you when you die, but if you're in debt, you can take someone else's. <laughs> Seven ninety, I believe, on it. Thank you. So, how are you? Oh, fine, Ta. Are you sure? You were a bit wound up last time you were in here. Ah, you know, I just let things get to me. You know, it is just the usual. A few nightmares with me kids. I suppose that's the price you pay for being a parent. Hey, you're talking to an expert in family nightmares here, you know. Do you reckon every family goes through the mill, or is it just the chosen few? I don't know. I often think what it'd be like if I had kids of my own. <laughs> they to think what type of mother I'd make. Go away, you'd make a cracking mum, you know you would. Oh, I don't know. I can cope when they're tiny and cute, but I don't know what I'd be like when they got bigger than me. It's when they're earning more than you, that's when the real fun starts. Well, I can cope with that, being taken care of in my old age. Well, that's a theory, love. It doesn't always work out like that. But you've got to be able to hang on to your pride, haven't you? I don't know about that. If someone offered to pay my way, I'd bite their hand off. I know somebody else who thinks like that. Maybe it's just me that's out of step, eh? Ta da, love. So, Friday's the big day, hmm? Yeah. I'm a bit nervous about it, to be honest. Oh, there's nothing to be nervous about. Maybe not for you. You've been through it all before. Oh, it's a really uplifting experience watching the screen, seeing that tiny little life inside of you. You make me sound like a Teletubby or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, Max won't mind not coming, will he? No, no, of course not. He realises we can't both be there. You are OK about all this, aren't you? I mean, if you feel we're pressurising you in any way, you will say. No, no, I'm fine. You sure? Well, I've been having a few problems with me dad, which doesn't help, but I'm learning to live with that now. Oh, Jackie, I mean, that must be awful for you, falling out with your dad. But especially at the moment, it must make you feel more vulnerable. Yeah, that's what it is, really. Anyway, it'll sort itself out. Oh, right, I'd better get back. So, are we all clear about next week, then? Yes, I'll pick you up a week on Friday. Listen, do you think it'd be best if we mess at the clinic? You know, just to save the local noses from having a good gap? Yes, good idea. Hi, darling. Mm. Hi. And I believe you've got a very exciting event coming up next week. Um, yeah, we've just been making all the arrangements. And we promise we'll bring you a photograph, won't we? <laughs> oh, can you do that? Yes, you can get one of those picture printouts. Oh, yeah, I remember the core girls had those prints on a T-shirt for Jackie. <laughs> Well, I, I don't think we'll be going as far as that. No, I think not. Mind you, you might be able to guess what sex the baby is. How can you really see that much detail? If it's a boy, it depends on whether it takes after his father or not. Thank you. As long as I'm not inconveniencing you. Hello there, Max. Hi. I'm glad I've caught you in. There's something I wanted to ask you both. I thought it would be rather nice if you and Susanna came over and had dinner with Molly and myself one evening quite soon. It would give you a chance to meet her properly. Well, that would be lovely. Uh, sometime over the weekend, perhaps. Whenever's convenient. I'm sure we can fit in with your schedule. David, uh, have a seat. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So, how are things progressing with you and Molly? 
Absolutely splendidly. <laughs> Couldn't be better. <laughs> uh, have you decided when she'll move into the bungalow yet? Ah, well, I'm afraid everyone's rather jumped the gun on that one. You see, um, Molly isn't actually going to be moving into the bungalow. I had hoped to tell you this over dinner. I wanted to be a surprise, but um, the thing is, I've decided to sell up next door and move into Molly's house. Well, I thought it wasn't a patch on the bungalow. Well, that's debatable, Max, but in any case, it's what I've decided to do, and uh, I'm also going to put in a manager at the petrol station. Oh, well, you really are ringing the changes. Well, why not? It's high time I stopped being a wage slave and started to enjoy life. Well, I think that's wonderful, David. Congratulations. Oh, mm. Thank you. And when's all this going to happen? I dare say it's going to take some time to sort everything out. Yes, but there's no reason for us to hang around. Um, I'm going to be moving in next week. <laughs> next week? Uh, David, um, are, you, are you sure you're doing the right thing? I mean, I, I don't want to sound like the prophet of doom, but um, what if things don't work out between the two of you? Um, <laughs> you have nowhere to live. Molly is as clear on this as I am. We both understand the level of commitment required, and we both passionately believe we can make it work. And in all honesty, I don't think it's really any of your business how I live my life. Oh, we realise that, David. But I think what Max means is that over the years, he's seen you more as a friend than a father-in-law, and he feels a certain responsibility towards you as a friend. Isn't that right, Max? Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, David, don't get me wrong, but... I didn't mean to imply... Molly wants me for what I am, not for how much money I've got in my bank account. And whether you or Ron or anyone else believes that is immaterial. It happens to be true. I've had the enormous good fortune to find love at this late stage in my life, and I would have thought that you could have been happy for me and wished me well. Instead of which, all I get is petty-minded suspicions and accusations. Well, I'm not prepared to put up with it. I intend to move out of the bungalow and live with Molly. And if you don't like it, you know what you can do. A promising medical career could die a death next on 4 when Ellen gives blood and then gets blitzed. See, the Monopoly's going and all, eh? Sorry. Monopoly, draft board. Look. Uh, no, 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 you carry on. Help yourself. Wouldn't be much use to me anyway, would it? I'm stuck here on my own. Solitaire's the only game in town from now on. Well, you're not making this any easier, are you? I just don't want to see you make the biggest mistake of your life, that's all. No. For the last time, Ron, my mind is made up and there's an end to it. I mean, she's a bit stuck up, like. But uh, she seems to know her stuff. I mean, Jimmy meant well, like, but, uh, well, I'd be chucking my money away, wouldn't I? I mean, he's not even qualified. Well, I'm talking about this new tutor I've got for our Leo. I mean, she seems really good, you know. All right. I'm not taking anything away from you, our fella. I mean, he did his best. But it's not exactly what you call the orthodox. I mean, I could see what he was trying to do, like, but I mean, teaching a kid vet nods. <laughs> That's not on that, is it? You don't listen to a word I've said, have you? You are? No, I thought so. Oh, yeah. 
I need you. Hi, Mum. Um, is it all right if I have a quick word with Alan's? Yeah, go ahead. And uh, best of luck. She's in a world of her own this morning. Just keep staring out the window. <laughs> Take the nooses. You all right, love? Yeah, fine. He's just winding you up. Oh, right. Um, listen, just to let you know, you've got to pick up our William and Kylie from Val's. Lindsay, I'm talking to you. It's a taxi. It's Cassie. Who else are you expecting? No one. It doesn't matter. Sorry, what were you saying? It's just that you've got to pick up our William and Kylie from Val's. Right. Lindsay, is uh, Peter due back today by any chance? Peter? I wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah. He's coming back today. Is that obvious? It's written all over your face. <sighs> Divi, aren't I? I just don't want you getting near us again, love. You know, building up your hopes. Yeah, I know all that. I mean, he's off in Africa. Sunshine safari. <laughs> Surrounded by all these dolly birds. And I'm trying to convince myself he'll be missing me. <laughs> Who am I kidding, I? I've got it. Afternoon, Max. David. Sorry to bother you. I wondered if I could have access to the loft sometime today. Uh, yeah, sure. I don't see why not. There's still some of my junk up there from the time I was lodging here. Who is it? It's me, Susanna. Oh, hello, David. Uh, David would like um, to get his stuff down from the loft. Let's see if I can get as much packed as I can before Friday. You're definitely going then? Oh, yes. Uh, David, um, I know things got a bit heated last week, but anything we said, it's, it's because we care for you. Because we have your best interests at heart. Yes, but if I could just have access to the loft, if you wouldn't mind. David, let's not fall out over this. Seems to me we already have. David, please. Max and I have already lost two of our best friends. We don't want to lose another. Let's not part on bad terms. Now, tropical crush. What do you think? Facing that first thing in the morning? <laughs> yes, it is a bit, um... It is a bit, isn't mm. it? So, Sahara Sunset. I hardly even see her anymore. I mean, we're supposed to be getting to know each other. That is why she came to live here. But since the letters started... Hiya. Uh... Hi. Oh, hi. We're just trying out some colours. And then I thought we might... We might go down to Bar Brookie for something to eat. Oh, great. Do you fancy coming with us? No, thanks. Got a letter to write. Oh, who to? A friend. What friend? God, what is this? Spanish Inquisition. It's to Nigel, a friend from Reading, OK? Anyway, you know where to find us if you fancy something to eat. Yeah. Do you two remember the Rainbow Warrior? Yeah, of course. Mm. Like it was yesterday. State terrorism or what? Louise! An innocent man died. Fascists. Anyway, I'll see you later. Oh, and I love that red. It's great. We all said things we shouldn't have. In the spare of the moment. Yes, I know, but Sunday forgetting Matthew's birthday like that, I feel so. David, you've got your own life, your own problems. Yes, I know, but it was very thoughtless of me, and I'm truly sorry. Oh. How was it? Not a perfect day. Well, much as you'd expect. Yes. But we got through it by helping each other. Good for you. We really are going to miss you, David. Nonsense. Interfering a busybody like me, you'll be glad to see the back of me. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. You're one of the family. We really hope you'll be very happy. And I hope you two will be happy as well. God knows if anyone deserves it. You do. Ta-da. Poor old dear, she's lost her cat. She's heartbroken. No. Shit. Poor Lindsay. Peter's due back today. She's been looking out that window all morning. Well, I thought it was over between the two of them. Well, it is. Oh, I see. For one of them, anyway. <laughs> Poor Gail. Jackie, look at this. Where is it? It's an advert for the manager's job. Manager's job, where? 
Yeah, the petrol station. <laughs> well, David's the manager. Exactly. What's going on? I'm glad we sorted things out with David. Ah, me too. Wouldn't have wanted him leaving under a cloud. Gonna be all right on your own. Mm, now we've got the weekend over mm. with. Can look ahead now, can't we? Oh, yes, and there's a big day on Friday. Jackie's antenatal appointment. Oh, yeah, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Mm, I'll see you later. Bye. Leo! Please, son, my head's banging. Can you not play somewhere else? Like where? Well, I don't know. What about the M62? Everything all right, Ron? All right, Max. No. No, it's not, actually. It's this business with Bing. It's getting me down. I know he thinks that I'm getting at him, but I'm not, Max, honestly. I just don't think that this Molly wants the right one for him, that's all. And I don't want to see him get airs. He's my best mate. I know exactly how you feel, Ron, but uh, he's made up his mind. All we can do is wish him well. All right. Hi. Hey. Nice looking bit of stuff. A friend of yours? It's Arleo's math tutor. Yeah. Wouldn't mind that helping me with me long division. Behave, you two. This is strictly professional. Uh, yes, of course. Only mess, eh? <sighs> Come on, Leo, you can play footy later. Math teacher. State terrorism. Fascists. Yeah. Where's you getting it all from? I don't know. Oh, I'll give you one guess, shall I? Marcus? Of course it's Marcus. But how can you be so sure? Because that's how he talks, how he, how he thinks. Those are his words, not hers. And why all the sudden questions about the Rainbow Warrior? I mean, where's she getting all that from? There's been another letter. There's got to have been. But she would have shown it to us. She's shown us all the other letters. Now, does she thinks this one's too extreme, or Marcus has sworn to secrecy? Well, now she tells me we're a safe house for the Red Brigade. Ollie, this is no laughing matter. For God's sake. She's an inquisitive 18-year-old girl who's trying to get to know her father. She hasn't joined Bader Meinhof. Yes, and I was an inquisitive 18-year-old girl as well. And I was naive, like Louise. But what happened to me? Hi, you two. Hi. Hi. Didn't come at a bad time, have I? No. We just couldn't agree on a colour for the kitchen. Mother Red gets my vote. Here, go and get yourself a drink. Thanks. Oh, no, Eleanor, now you can't read anything into her wanting to paint the kitchen red. It's the manager's job for this place. It's up for grabs. But I thought Mr Crosby was the manager. Well, he is. He was. Oh, hi, Mr Crosby. Didn't see you there. Don't worry, don't worry. So what's this, Mr Crosby? Are you retiring or something? Well, it can't come as the biggest surprise in the world, Lindsay. I am getting on for 65 after all. And I've put adverts in all the trade papers and the Echo. What about this place? I mean, you've only just got it up and running. Yeah, and it's doing dead well. And you like working here? Yes, of course I do. I've loved every minute of it. So why jack it in, then? <sighs> For the love of a good woman. Oh, Molly. <laughs> she and I have become very close. And she's asked me to move in with her. And I've said yes. Go away! So you'll be leaving Brookside close as well? Afraid, sir. At the end of the week. Excuse me. Oh, my God. Well, what's going to happen to this place, Mignone? It'll continue to be mine, Jackie. That's why I'm looking for a manager, so I can take a back seat. Well, what about us, our jobs? Don't worry about your jobs. They'll all be secure. So does that mean we won't see you around again, then? Well, I'll be popping in and out occasionally, but you'll certainly be seeing a lot less of me. All changed, then, eh? I know it's come rather out of the blue, but... You see, at my age, you can't really afford to hang around. <laughs> I know what you're all thinking. Silly old fool rushing in there like that. Don't know what these two are thinking, but I think it's lovely. Do you? Me too. I am made up for you. <sighs> Thank you, Cassie. Yeah, you go for it, Dave. And good luck to you. You're a smashing fella, and you deserve to be happy. All the best, love. Thank you, Jackie. I really don't know what to say after all the doubters and detractors. It. Well, it really is very sweet of you. Thank you all. And what about Twyford Down and Newbury? They should never have been allowed. And the public inquiries whitewashes.
because they still push the roads to destroy the environment. Is there a point to this lecture? The point is that capitalism wins every time. Money versus the environment, money always wins. The democratic process is a sham. Oh, so what's the alternative? Direct action. What? Hit them where it hurts. They're all legitimate targets. Big business, contractors, security men, even the police. OK, that's enough, Louise. They're all fascists. I said that's enough. Oh, so I'm not, not allowed my own opinion anymore? Oh, so it's your opinion. What was that meant to me? Oh, never mind. Look, Ollie and I would just like to finish our lunch in peace. So if you care to take your soapbox elsewhere... I'm not going anywhere. It's a free country, isn't it? Or is it? OK, you coming? I'll pay the bill. Go on, typical. Run away, turn your back. What did you say? What? About running away. Hey, just take it easy. Running away? What did you mean by that? Nothing. Nothing. Eleanor, for God's sake. Well, thanks for that. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Take care. All right, boss. All right, Jimmy. Nice one. You old sly boots. You were. Bit of afternoon delight, was it? Where'd she spring from then? The uh, agency. An agency? What do you mean you had to uh, to pay her, like? Oh, yeah, 12 quid an hour, Jimmy. 12 quid? Is that what it costs these days? She's a teacher, Jimmy. You are? Yeah, she's our Leo's new math tutor. Oh, right, I see. So, uh, so you didn't like... No, 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 didn't you? Yeah, but you would have liked to, though, wouldn't you? Don't be giving me that innocent look, Mick. That's why you gave me the boot, wasn't it? You what? I know your game. Replace me with some dolly bird so you can make a move on it. Hey, hey hang on a minute, Jimmy. Mick, she's hardly the prime of Miss Jean Brody, is she? Let's get one thing straight, shall we? The reason I gave you the boot is because you're not qualified. You don't know the first thing about maths. Mick, me and your Leo were doing fine. Look, Jimmy, we're talking about my son's future here. I mean, Miss Green's got all the qualifications going. Yeah, I can see that. I'm surprised at you, Mick. I would have thought you'd have learned your lesson after the last time. All that business with that Jenny one. Thanks a lot, Jimmy. Thanks for reminding me. Hey, no, Mick. Mick, I never meant it like that. Mick, I'm sorry. <sighs> so what do you think of us, son? Leo? What? What's up? Nothing. Nothing? Face is tripping you up there. It's eh? Miss Green? Yeah, she's crap. Hey, I won't have you talking like that. But I can't understand it. You what? Today she was trying to teach me algebra, but I can't understand it. Well, why not? Because she's no good. Leo, you're going to have to concentrate, sir. What? Because she talks posh. <laughs> she's a maths teacher. And is that it? You don't fancy it, do you? You what? Well, not you and all. No, son, I don't fancy her. You know, the only person I'm worried about in all this is you. You're the only one that matters. Why can't I have Jimmy back? All right, Leo. But Daddy's good, and I like him. I'm not going to learn anything off her. I know, but... <laughs> no, son. Why not? Let's stick with Miss Green for now, eh? I thought you said I was the one who matters. I want to learn. I just want to be good at maths, that's all. I don't know about you two, but I'm going to miss him. Yeah, me too. He was a real gent, wasn't he? It'll be the same without him. Hey, we could do something for him going away, a party or something. Oh, yeah, what you reckon, Ron? You know, a party for Dave leaving. Party? You mean a week? What? That Molly one, I'm telling you. He doesn't know what he's letting himself in for. She's not the right one for him. Oh, no, I've met her. She seemed lovely. Just Mr Crosby's type. Oh, ah, yeah, putting on all her airs and graces, I bet. But it's all top show. The only thing she's interested in is Bing's bank balance. Oh, is that them um, green cheese I can smell? Yep, definitely green cheese. Very funny. Ron, you're just jealous because your best mate's copped off and you're feeling left out. And that's 2 25 please. Can't you just be happy for him? Girls, believe me, there is nothing I would like better than to shake his hand, look him in the eye and say, well done, mate, all the best, but I'm telling you, it's all wrong. It's bound to end in tears. 
What a rotten thing to say. Yeah, well, I can't help the way I feel, Cass. Let's just hope that he sees sense before it's too late, eh? Ta da. Ron. God, please. Now, how long on to this, love? You are. You can't. It's the advert for the manager's job. Yeah, but I'm gonna be applying for it, aren't I? It'll save everybody else's time. You don't really think Bing's gonna give it to someone else over me, do you? Some consolation, eh? Mind you, got myself a new job, haven't I? <sighs> Cocky so and so. Hi. Hi. Are you okay? Great. a bit over the top, you know. Yeah. Did I? You seem to be getting yourself worked up over nothing. Oh, thanks. I'll remember that when she starts firebombing police stations. I'm going into town. See a film or something. Have a nice time. I'll run you in. Thanks. Right. Well, uh, I'll see you later then. You going for this job or what? Me? Oh, you're joking, aren't you? No, it's right up your street. How could I run this place between our Kylie and William? Just about managed as it is. Yeah, you've got your hands full, haven't you? What about you? Are you going for it? Me? Nah. Why not? Nah, I couldn't run this place. Why not? You're on the trading post. Mm -hmm. You've no kids to worry about, have you? Rice age, qualifications, experience, you'd be ideal. Ah, oh, but you're forgetting one thing. Ron Dixon's going for it. And he's Mr. Crosby's mate. He'll walk it. Old mates together, you mean? No, that's not Bing style. It'll all be above board. This job will go to the best candidates. Do you reckon? Yeah, I do. So get your name down. And you show Ron Dixon and everyone else what you're made of. See ya. Thanks, my love. Mushy peas on top. Thanks, bye. Are you sure he's definitely due back today? Julia came in for a dinner yesterday and Peter found a salon. I don't even know why I'm worrying. The last thing he's going to want to see is my miserable girl. Oh, Liz. Well, I've blown it, haven't I? I found someone else by now. You do have a that. Mum, a good-looking bloke like him. He's not going to be single for long, is he? I've had my chance, so I've got to move on now and forget him. Right. I'll see you later. Tell me Auntie Val I'm on away. All right. See you, Dad. See you, love. What's over there? Seems a bit down in the dumps. Oh, uh, you know, woman's thing. Oh, right. Say no more. Hi, Hi, Mick. Hi, boss. Right. I'll get home, then. Get the tea ready. All right, love. I'll see you later. See you. See you, Jack. Uh, Jimmy, um... Oh, Neil's got something he wants to ask you. Oh, I. Um, Miss Green isn't going to be teaching me anymore. How come, like? Uh, she wasn't working, I was. Ah, you mean she wasn't any good? All right, Jimmy, I made a mistake. So, anyway, do you want to come back? Start teaching me maths again? Of course I do. Love to, mate. Hey, good old Mr. Chips to the rescue. <laughs> That's a good one, isn't it, Mr. Chips? <laughs> I'll get off here, Yeah, I won't be late, son. Nice one, kid. That's more like it, Mick. Hey, Jimmy, before you get too carried away, remember what I said earlier about our Leo's future being at stake. So you mess up even the once, and I'm looking for a new teacher. Eleanor. Oh, hi. What are you doing in Louise's room? Looking for this. What is it? It's a letter from Marcus to Louise, and there are others as well. What? Ones we haven't seen. 
I knew there had to be others. I just knew it. What else has she been hiding from me? A party for me? How very thoughtful, Rob. Yeah, well, it wasn't my idea. Ah. Uh -huh. Now, why doesn't that come as the greatest surprise in the world? You know my opinion, don't you? Only too well. All right, Bing, all right. We both know where we stand, so that's an end to it. Yes. So, are you ready to talk, then? Talk? About what? Business. What business? What business, he says. And this... business. Where did that come from? That should be in the garage window. Yeah, I know, but we don't want anyone else getting a grubby little hands on it, do we? Not when we're going to carve it up between ourselves. I beg your pardon. The manager's job. I take it you are going to give it to me. <laughs> Ron, I think you're being a little previous. I haven't even started interviewing yet. You're going to be interviewing? Of course I am. Oh, of course, yeah, I get it. <laughs> Company policy. You've got to go through the motions, eh? Nice one, Bing. Ron, I'm endeavouring to find the most suitable person to manage the petrol station. A business in which, need I remind you, I have a considerable sum of money invested. Yeah, I know, but I just thought you and me, you know, best of mates and all that. Eh? Ron. If you want to apply for the position of petrol station manager, I suggest you go through the appropriate channels. In the meantime, I shall put this back where it belongs. Talented children driven by pushy parents. Cutting Edge, next on 4, observes the burning ambition that fuels that desire to succeed. My, you're dressed to kill. Yeah, I look the part, don't I, Max? And, uh, what about that, eh? What is it? That, my son, is the membership tie of a very exclusive club. Oh, yeah? Greengrocers Association of Great Britain. Oh, right. So, what's the occasion? I'm going down the garage for an interview. You know, the manager's job. Oh, yes, of course. Of course, it's just a mere formality, you know, just dotting the I's, crossing the T's. You're really confident, aren't you? Well, I've got it all going for me, haven't I? Well, I think you've done really well getting this far. What do you mean? Getting this far? Well, getting yourself an interview, I mean, it's impressive. Considering David put an ad in the trade papers, The Echo. The Echo? Mm, apparently the response has been overwhelming. That's so? Bit of competition for you, eh? I'm sure it'll be no problem. No, no, not a problem, no. <laughs> Best of British, anyway. Oh, and I trust I'll see you this evening at David's, uh, do? I'll be there, Maxie. Good. Right, love, that's 60 pence change. And don't forget your flower. Ta-da. Mm. So you've got the Jehovah Witnesses in. No, they're here for the interviews, you know. New manager. Oh, right. Ace pencil. Oh. Dave's last week, eh? Oh, it's dead sad, isn't it? Yeah, I'm really going to miss him around the place. And a nice gentleman. There's not many of them around, is there? And he's dead kind. All oh, the help he gave me, Mum and our Beth. I'll never forget that. Oh. Art of gold, eh? Yeah. Well, we'll just have to give him a really good send-off tonight, won't we? Yep, I'm gonna go home and make him a sponge cake. Oh, that would be lovely. <laughs> See you later. See you, love. Ciao, love. Oh, I tell you this, that Molly won't just know how lucky she is. And to think that I let him slip through the oak. Really? 
Oh, yeah, me and Dave, we were very close at one time. Dancing partners. Oh, I got he dance. Oh, I used to glide across that floor. The walls, the fandango. <laughs> Never got as far as the Lombard, I like. <laughs> More's the pity. <laughs> anyway, I love you and leave you. Um, have you heard anything from Peter? Oh, only that uh, he's having the time of his life. Wasn't he supposed to be coming back yesterday? Well, he was supposed to, but he's enjoying himself so much that he's decided to stay for another week. <laughs> See you long. Hiya, you love. Hiya. Hiya. What's all this? Well, I took your advice, applied for the job, got myself an interview. Oh, Cassie, I made up for you. It's hard, but it's only an interview. Well, you can't get the job without the interview, can you? I suppose not. And you look great. I'm dead nervous. You'll be fine. Just be yourself. Afternoon, ladies. Hello, Rob. Hi. Is uh, that the opposition? Like lambs to the slaughter. Yes, but Cassie's got an interview as well. <laughs> and what's that supposed to mean? Well, with all due respect, love, I mean, you haven't got the experience of it. Take no notice of him, love. What time's your interview? 2.30. What time's yours? Uh, I haven't got a time. Why not? Well, I don't need one, do I? Not with me and Bing being mates. It's yep. going to be more informal-like. Thank you, Mr O'Connor. I'll be in touch. Thank you. Bing. Uh, so the next is uh, Miss Williams. Is that yourself? Bing. Not now, Rob. Bing? What is it? Look, if you sneak me in now, I'll be able to get off to the quickie, won't I? Get the booze in for tonight. Uh, Miss Williams, if you'll excuse me just a moment, I'll be right with you. Come in, then. Told ya. Close the door. Where'd you find rent a mob? rent a mob as you call them, happen to be the cream of the applicants. Really? Well, the rest couldn't have been up to much. <laughs> so, when do you think you'll be able to fit me in, then? Sorry, I don't think I can. Well, if you'd rather wait until you get shut of all that lot... Ron. I'm not going to be interviewing you. That's more like it, Bing. I mean, you know I can do the job, don't you? <laughs> I don't think you understand, old son. I'm not offering you the job. What? You didn't even make the shortlist, I'm afraid. But... I'm sorry. Oh. Armchair activist, weekend anarchist. He's getting at me, isn't he? <laughs> I'd love to know how you work that one out. <laughs> you read the letters. It's there in black and white. Your name wasn't mentioned once. It didn't have to be. I was there on the raids. I'm one of the wishy-washy liberals who betrayed the cause. Guilty by association. It was nearly 20 years ago. You were just an 18-year-old girl who, who got frightened and ran away. Well, that's not how Marcus tells it. And if he's told Louise about the raids, I mean, what else has he told her about me? Well, there isn't anything else, is there? Is there? No, of course not. Well, then, stop panicking. Ollie, you don't know him like I do. He's an angry man. He's, he's bitter. I mean, it was there in the letters. And why does Louise think she has to hide them from us? Oh, Eleanor. Oh, I'm going to have to confront her, aren't I? Oh, no, that's not a good idea. Well, how else am I going to get to the bottom of this? Look, you're letting your mind just drift away with this. Your name wasn't mentioned in any of those letters, so why not just let it drop? Oh, just like that. Just walk away. Yes. You discuss those letters, and it's going to lead to a massive showdown. You, you've been in her room, rifling through her things. She's not a kid. She's 18 years old. She, she deserves some privacy. Oh, privacy, yes. Secrecy, no. Not when the secrets involve him. She's been in there ages with him. She must be making a good impression. Cassie, yeah, relax. Just worry about yourself, will you? Yeah, I know, but I've never been for a job like this before, you know? Management-like. I just hope I say the right things. You'll be fine. God, Jackie, I need to go to the loo again. Oh, you've just been. Yeah, I know, but it's me nerves. Oh, get outside. Get some fresh air, Good will you? Good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Hiya. Hiya. Hi, love. Hiya. What's all the cast? Oh, she's got an interview for the manager's job. Yeah, I love that one. Oh. 
Bag of nerves she is. In and out of the toilet all morning. Oh, the poor thing. Oh, I... It's not him, you know, Linz. It's not Peter. How do you know? He won't be back till next week. Julie was in before and must have had a phone call from him. Well, is he all right? Yeah, he's all right. Why is he not coming back then? Mum, what is it? Um, I think he might be enjoying himself too much. All oh, right, I see. Well, good luck to me. <laughs> I need to be expected. Thank you, Miss Williams. I'll be in touch. Thank you very much. Right. Now, Cassie Charlton. That's right. Cassie. Cassie, things ready for you. Cassie. It's all right, Mr. Crosby. I'm here. Thought I had to go to the loo. <sighs> False alarm. Must be a chill or something. <laughs> right. Let's get started, shall we? Close the door, please, Cassie, and take a seat. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Well, no need for introductions. No. Might as well get straight down to it. Suits me. Very impressive CV. Yeah? Most impressive. So, tell me, why did you apply for this job? Because Jackie Corkill told me to. I beg your pardon. Wrong answer. as well as my qualifications, I've got a good sense of humour. <laughs> well, at least that's what my mum always used to say. <laughs> that I liked a good laugh. <laughs> uh, not too much of a laugh, though. I mean, I wouldn't let it get in the way of me work. But, I mean, if you walk around with a miserable gob on you all day, <laughs> people aren't going to want to come back, are they? <laughs> I mean, they want to see a nice, happy face, don't they? <laughs> Save us with a smile. <laughs> Indeed. So... There's your strengths. What about your weaknesses? Me? Weaknesses? You've <laughs> got a list as long as your arm. <laughs> Where do we start? Uh, in the morning. First thing in the morning, I've got a right temper. You don't want to get on the wrong side of me. And uh, suppose I haven't really got much experience. I mean, running a place this size takes a lot, doesn't it? Especially as you're not going to be around anymore. And um, what else? Um, I won't stand for people being rude. You know, bad language. Uh -uh. Okay, Cassie, that's fine. Thank you. Well, we're finished. That's fine. That's it. We ran out of time, I'm afraid. I was just getting warmed up. I've got loads more to say. I'm sorry. I've got a lot of people to see, and I'm on a rather tight schedule. Oh, right. So, thank you again for coming. How did I do? I'll let you know in due course. Yeah, but did it do all right, like? Cassie, I have a lot of people to see. They're waiting, if you wouldn't mind. Right, Mr. Shenton? So, she's hidden some letters. And it's not as if you've got any more dark, terrible secrets from the past, is it? Well, stop feeling so threatened, then. I just don't want her to make the same mistakes as I did. Marcus is an extremist. Yes, OK, and Louise is inquisitive. She, she wants to explore. But at the end of the day, she's sensible. She'll be all right. I know the man. I know what he's capable of. Yes, well, let's leave Marcus out of this for the moment. What? Let's worry about what's going through Louise's mind. OK, so she knew she was adopted. But she didn't know who her real parents were. And then suddenly, six months later, she's living with her natural mother, whom she's only just met. And she's discovered that her real dad is a convicted terrorist. Well, it must, must be like a bomb going off in her head. And she's bound to feel a bit confused, isn't she? Yeah, I suppose so. And mixed up. Yeah, I suppose so. So she keeps a few letters to herself. What's the big deal? 
He's got an agenda. Oh, here we go. But he's manipulative, cunning. I mean, you've seen how she's changed. Her attitudes, the, the way she talks, the things she talks about, the language she uses. She's at that age. Yes, a young, malleable mind, just ripe for a spot of brainwashing, just like I was. Oh, what's it going to be next? Conspiracy theories. What? Oh, grassy knolls and white picket fences. Oh, let's not get into fences. After all, you'd only end up sitting on one. What? Look, I turn to you for some supports, some advice, and all I get is one platitude after another. I wonder if that's how you feel. That is how I feel. I mean, whose side are you on? I'm not on anyone's side. Exactly. Oh, for God's sake. For God's sake, nothing. If you can't give me the support I need, then, then I'd rather you weren't here at all. There's no need, mate. I would just like to explain. Bing, I understand, honestly. You do? Yeah, I don't... Well, I can't really say I blame you. You're getting back at me, aren't you? No, I'm not. Oh, it's fair dues, mate, after everything I said about Molly. And I admit that I probably went about things the wrong way, but... I only did it because you're me, mate, you know. I appreciate your concern, if not your sentiments. But you're wrong about the job, you know. What do you mean? I considered your application on its merits. <laughs> you didn't even give me an interview. I know, and I'm sorry. But you were always going to be a non-starter for that job, Ron. Come on, Bing. You know I'd have been perfect for the job with all my experience. Three heart attacks. Well, all right, yeah, but... I just couldn't take the chance, old son. Not with my best friend. It's a very taxing and demanding job, and if anything had happened to you, I just wouldn't have been able to live with myself. Yeah. <sighs> Great, isn't it? On the scrappy for 50. <laughs> Something suitable will turn up, I'm sure it will. Don't hold your breath. All those letters are sent out. Not a sniff. I just want to work again, Bing. I'll do anything. You okay? Yeah. No, I won't stay long. Susanna, you're right. Oh, sad. Uh, about David going? He's been a good friend. <laughs> been more than a good friend. You know, if it wasn't for Jackie Dixon, we'd have nothing to stay here for. Oh, I don't know. I mean, there's the house and restaurant. Oh. Bricks and mortar, Max. I wouldn't care if I never saw this place again. Hmm, suppose you're right. <sighs> Big day tomorrow, eh? Oh, I know. Nervous. Oof, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I'm not even gonna be there. It gets closer all the time. Every day it... <sighs> it feels more real. And tomorrow I'll get to look at the monitor. See the scan. A baby. Our baby. Well, surely that's worth staying around for, eh? <laughs> Come on. Let's go and see David, eh? There you go. And you haven't anything, love? It's not a model. Hey, it's, it's not like you. What is about him? Oh, he'll be here soon. It's not that. It's the Thank money we should get me from. All right, everybody, I'll Thanks, get it. Thanks, Rob. Pull it top up. Yeah, I've blown it, I know I have. Well, it sounds that way, kid. Well, Dad. Listen, when someone asks you for a list of your weaknesses, you're not supposed to tell them, are you? Ain't you supposed to lie? Everybody else does. Should be. Well, I just thought honesty was the best policy. 
people have made a fool of myself, haven't I? Well, you were nervous, wait. Yeah, I'm sure Big will take us into account, love. <laughs> Come in, both of you. Let's get your coats on. I brought you cake and I made it all myself. Oh, Rachel, that's really Thank you. And I made it one of my special corned beef pies. Oh, sounds mouth-watering, Julie. Thank you very much. So? So what? Where is she? Who? Molly, I'm dying to see her again. Oh, oh she was a bit busy. She couldn't make it tonight. Probably put an arsenic in his cocoa drink, ladies. Yes, oh, please, yes, please. I've said too much, haven't I? I wouldn't be surprised if he sacked me. I don't be soft. Bing wouldn't do that. I wouldn't be so sure. Not after that performance, love. Just ignore him. There you go, love. How's that? Thank you. Listen, put yourself out of your misery. Go and ask Bing if you've got the job. I couldn't. I'd be too embarrassed. Oh, go on. Catch him while he's in a good mood. Go ahead. Do you reckon? Go on. I'll hold your drink. Um, Mr. Crosby? Cassie, yes, just a moment, please. Whoops, mind you. Oh, oh that just asked it. <laughs> Susanna, Max. Wouldn't have missed it for the world. Mm. <laughs> Maybe for you. Hello. I've got a feeling this is just not going to be my day. Um. It's David Crosby's leaving party tonight. I know. I promised David we'd pop in. We? Oui. Well, he asked me to invite you, so I'm inviting you. Well, I'll take that as a no then, shall I? I won't wait up. Max and I would love to go to Zimbabwe, wouldn't we, darling? Yes, it sounds fantastic. Mm, lucky Peter. <laughs> anyway, he's had the time of his life, hasn't he? Yes, I bet. He was supposed to be coming back yesterday, but he's decided to stay on a bit longer. Mm, I don't blame him. <laughs> I'm hoping he's met someone. I mean to say, he's a lovely lad, isn't he? And he deserves to meet someone special. And let's face it, there's nothing here for him, is there? Anyway, you two, our thing's going on. The Maybe I should come see this next door. Carmel, love, will you stop going on about it? You're putting me off my pint. What's wrong, love? Oh, nothing. It's just Tim promised he'd be to see Mr Crosby. Oh, don't be worrying about it. He's probably out with his mates, isn't he? He doesn't want to be stuck in here with a load of albums like us. <laughs> yeah, well, speak for yourself. <laughs> All right, I'll get it. Are you going to stay in touch? Yes, of course. I'll only be a few miles down the road, Rich. So can I come and see you? I'd really like to get to know Molly. And I'd really like Molly to get to know you. Hello, Jolly. Hi. Oh, good man. What are you going to have to drink? Uh, red wine, please. Good. Uh, a large one. <laughs> Come on up. Hi, Ollie. Hi. Hi, Hello. No, Eleanor. Uh, no, no. Uh, she's she's busy. I, I left her working. Ah, oh, shame. We were just saying it would be nice if Max could say a few words, you know, with the day of leaving, like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that would be a nice idea. Yes, OK, OK. But I could do with another one of these. <laughs> <laughs> You're going home already? Yeah, I'm just not in the mood. <sighs> Lindsay's is what I think it is. I don't know what to say, look. Well, there's nothing to say, is there? I'm just gonna have to get on with it. Look, I'll see you later. Okay, look. Right, that's it. I want an answer. Go for you, kid. Go on, suck it. <sighs> Mr. Crosby. Everybody, can I just have your attention, please, just for a moment? Thanks. Thank you. I'd just like to take the opportunity to um, say a few words. I'd really like to thank David. Thank him for being a good friend and a good neighbour. And for being someone that we all knew we could rely on. Here, here. And for being someone that we could all turn to for advice. Thanks, David. Um, we wish you all the best, and uh, we'll all miss you. Me mascara. Oh. I'll give her over. He'll be back by the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be sick to death of him after a few days. <laughs> Mr Crosby? Timothy. Where have you been? I've been worried sick. I've been out working, and then went shopping. Till this time? Well, I bought Mr Crosby a present. Oh, isn't that lovely? Oh. Timothy. I don't know what to say. She's 
She's a beauty. I don't think you'll have time for model making, Bing. I think Molly will be keeping you too busy. <laughs> Thank you, Sinbad. No, she's a beauty. Yeah, it's for helping me with the army stuff and that. But you needn't have. There was really no need. It must have cost you a fortune. Well, I've been saving up all my tips from work. Yeah, the receipts in the bag, in case you want to change it for a plane or something. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you all, friends and neighbours. Each and every one of you. Thank you. Three cheers for Bing. Hip hip. Hooray! Hip hip. Hooray! Hip hip. Hooray! Thirsty? Sick to the back teeth. You want to talk about it? No. I think I'll just get Blotto. <laughs> sure. Well, uh, you know where I am, mate. Now, Mick says he'll just shut up the chippy and he'll be over to give you the send-off. Hey, Bing, do you remember that time when you were going round the coast with your dial? What's it? Pooper scooper. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Declared war on crack and he did. God rest his soul. Some of the residence meetings we used to have, eh? Hey, not half. Made the House of Commons look like a chimp's tea party. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be the same without you, David. No, no, no. There can only ever be one chairman of the BR. Oh, that is true. Thank yeah. God for that. <laughs> well, see you, see, mate. You're a real diamond. You're a one-off. Mm. You're a gentleman, Dave Crosby. And that Molly Marchbank doesn't realise what a lucky woman she is. Yeah, you've helped so many people around here. Yeah! yeah. And what we're going to do without you? Oh, it's not going to be the same anymore. Good on you, Cheers, Bing. Oh, well, well done. Cheers. A whopping vindaloo for a scrum full of rugby players. TV Dinners doesn't do things by halves. Here on 4, next. Your end back. I can't. You've got the flaming thing stuck now, haven't you? I told you, take it out through the French windows. Thank you, Ron, for yet another of your invaluable suggestions. <laughs> Bing, try angling it back toward you. Oh, we got the damn thing in all right. Why the hell can't we get it out? As the actress said to the bishop. Well, what's the point, Bing? Where's the damn thing gonna fit in that apology for the matchbox she lives in? Look, God knows I hope it works out for you. But what happens if it doesn't? What happens if I'm right and you're wrong, eh? Don't you realise you're giving up everything for her? And you're gonna lose it all? I know you are. Your house, your, your savings, your self-respect, and believe me, I know what that feels like. Um, excuse me, there, man. <sighs> well, I must have some decent tights somewhere. I can't go into the hospital with monkey tights on, can I? Oh, did they make you strip off when you go for a scan? Oh, don't ask me. Oh, is that what they tell you what sex it is? Do they? Happy birthday, Rach. Happy 19. <gasps> so your birthday today? Did you know it was her birthday? Oh, ha ha. Well, I'll be in the kitchen when you're ready to bring me my amazing presents. Does anyone want a coffee? No, thanks. OK. You know, I don't think I'd want to know what sex it was. She will. <laughs> God, yeah, she'll be slap up against the screen, counting every finger. Where are you meeting her? At the hospital. Casey, I'm dreading it, honest. No, oh, I am calm. I'm extremely calm. Why do you keep saying keep calm? Just don't jump in and do all the talking for her, that's all. Oh, too smart. <sighs> so, what happens today? 
A scan, all the tests, mm -hmm. blood pressure, urine, and then they'll book her in. What, you mean for the birth? Yeah. No, 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 no. At the hospital. No, she can't have the baby here, not in Liverpool. Oh, why not? Oh, well, God, because today's dangerous enough. That's why not. What if somebody sees you together at the antenatal clinic? And if she does have it locally, uh, people round here, people who know us, uh, know she's pregnant. No, hang on, hang on, hang on. We've got to think this through. Look at that. No, nah, it just looks worse than it is. It'll come up with a bit of polish. In fact, I think I've got a bit of button polish in there. Hang on, I won't be a minute. Morning, gents. Oh, morning. Hi, hi. Here you go. Rough estimate for your bedroom conversion. I've even thrown in golf fit. There's an optional extra for your ensuite. Ah. Do you want this thing in or not? But, but in, yes. Right. Look, the thing about this bedroom conversion, Mr. Um, Chadwick, is that, uh, well, frankly, my plans have changed radically since you were over last time. I'm moving. Oh, right. This will go on in the van, then? Uh, yes. Excuse me. Oh, thank you. Thanks for that. On three, OK? Right, right. So what's happened to your bungalow, then? I'm putting it on the market. Not if you've got one whisker of self-preservation left, you're not. Ready? One. Which I'm seriously beginning to doubt. One, two, three. It's right. the only bit of security you've got, isn't it? Hey, what happens when she spends all your capital and she wants to kick it out in the gutter? Look, Bing, by all means, throw away everything else you've got in this world, but hang on to the bungalow. Uh, look, lads, I realise this is a private dispute, but if you do decide to sell, do you mind if I have another look round the back? No, no, of course not. Go ahead. Ah, oh, cheers. Come on, Cam. What's happened to Sinbad? Who cares what's happened to Sinbad? I'm talking about you. Oh, so, you're off then, David. Ah, oh, yes, yeah, soon as Molly arrives. Right, well, this is it. Final goodbyes, eh? Hardly. I'm not going to Timbuktu. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, anyway, uh, all the best. <laughs> oh, bye-bye, oh, David. Um, darling... Yes, we've got to go. Uh, Susanna, she's got a... A, a dental appointment. Yeah. All oh, right. Good luck, eh? Thanks. We'll ring you. Yes, of course. <laughs> Look after yourself. <laughs> because Molly money digger sure as hell won't. Look, all can... right, all right, Bing. But I'll bet you're a teller. No, make that 20, eh? I'll bet you 20 quid by this time next week you, you're crawling back here. A wiser but a poorer man. Oh, God, for heaven's sake. What? What have I said now? Grace, have you got anything? Appointment card, specimen? Well, good luck, then, eh? Casey, I don't want to go. I don't want to do this anymore. Why does I ever get myself into this? You're going to be fine. And off you go. Go on. Your phone's ringing. I'll get it. Uh, nice little property, that. It's got potential. Sorry, Bing, I couldn't find that polish anywhere, mate. Oh, don't worry, Sim, but I'll buy some. Right, well, yeah, here's the keys to the van. I'd tell Ron I want it back by four. Oh, for heaven's sake, it'll be back well before lunch. Uh, you live there? Uh, yeah, yeah. Got a lad who works in the builder's yard on Cape Street. Yeah? Oh, I thought so. Why, what's he on now? Oh, I'm just checking. Excuse me. Listen, here's my card. If you do decide to sell, <laughs> give me a ring, eh? All right. I'll see ya. Right, thanks. Cheers. See you, mate. Come on, Candy. Who's he? Shadwick and son, builders. Mm. Right, that was a Miss Williams. Wilson. Williamson. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, she wants to know about the manager's job, so I told her that the letters were in the post. Right. Oh, who's got it then? Anyone we know? I wouldn't be that unprofessional. A successful candidate will be informed, as you say, by post. Ah, there's Molly. And another heartfelt prayer bites the dust. Molly! We haven't thought this through at all, have we? Well, I have. What about nothing else for weeks? It's like a minefield, Susanna, this whole thing. I don't see how we're ever going to work it out. Do you think he'll mind? I don't know. I'll ask him. Ron? Ronald, son, just a small favour. 
Molly wants me to drive the Cortina. I, I don't know why, but would you mind awfully driving the van on your own? Of course she wants you to drive the Cortina. Just remind me again, will you, Bingo, son? What was the original plan? You and me in the van, her in the Cortina. Well, yes. Oh, but, but she... no, no. That would be far too dangerous, wouldn't it? Because between here and air place, I might just manage to drill a hole in that thick skull of yours and stuff some sense into it. I just forget it. I'll drive the van. Yeah, straight into the jaws of a cobra. That's it, bro. That's it. Just one more of your tasteless and disparaging remarks about Molly and I'll... And go on, what? You'll do what? And you will never, ever be a welcome guest in Molly's house. This is soft. Bing, all I'm doing, I just want to make sure that devious female... What? All right, all right, I'm sorry. It's just... Oh, for God's sake, Bing, can't you see, you daft old fool? I'm gonna miss you. It's not just about where she has it. It's 101 things. What happens when she starts to show? Well, she can't have the baby in Liverpool, so where does she go? We'll have to set her up with somewhere, and how much is that going to cost? Oh, well, if it's just about money... No, it's not just about money. What is she going to tell everyone? I mean, she can't just disappear for months without a, a completely watertight cover story. Well, I don't know. But why can't she tell everybody she's going abroad? What about the bar? What about Ron and Mike? They'll expect to phone her. They'll want postcards. How do we get round that? Which assumes, of course, that we get over the first hurdle and convince her to disappear in the first place. She will. She's as worried about secrecy as we are. Oh, OK, this is it. Good luck. Oh, I'm going to see it, Max. I'm going to see our baby. <laughs> if we lose you, we'll wait. Yeah, I, uh... Well, no regrets. None. Say my darling. Home, James. be a serial murderer, couldn't I? Or, or I could have several previous husbands rotting away under my floorboards. <laughs> I don't think so, somehow. Yes, but you don't know, though, do you? I mean, you don't really know me at all. Yet you're willing to take the risk. I think it's called love, my darling. <laughs> Left at the next junction. I know. Tell you what, let's live dangerously. Let's go straight on. Sorry? I just want to keep going. You know, take the scenic route. One last little risk. All right. Next left, Bing. Beep, 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 beep. Left. God, what the hell is she playing at now? 
This is the road out to Frodsham. It is, isn't it? Would you believe a surprise lunch in a Cheshire pub? What? <laughs> Ron and a van load of furniture. I'm more convinced by the husbands under the floorboards. <laughs> Just trust me, David. <laughs> And your present address? It's flat two, the parade. Manor Park. But she'll probably be moving to Chester soon. This pub of yours, Molly, not exactly local, is it? Not much further now, honestly. Turn left just there. Where? There, by that lodge. Oh, right, fine. What is this, Molly? Where are we going? One more minute, David. Just give me one more minute. Slow down, David. Just clear those trees. Welcome home, David. Just a few quick questions. Married? She means, are you married? Oh, um, no. But he's a very good friend. Mm. Waiter. In a local restaurant. Oh. This is... What is this, a hotel? This is my house, David. Oh, look at that view, isn't it something? No, 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 hang on. Your house is in Liverpool. This is... This is yours? Mm-hmm. All of this is, is yours? Well, it was. So, whose is it now? It's ours, David. Bing, what the hell's going on? Where are we? Bressingham Hall, my house. You're joking. Small tip, Ron. Go with your first instinct. March blank the butchers. March bank the meat millionaire. Oh, God, no. That was my husband, Norman. I knew it. I knew it. You thought, well, well I'm onto a good thing here. And you were on. And this is what 25 years of shrewd investment has done for us. And that is where, if you will still have me, David and I are going to live. What does it matter where we live, whether it's a hovel or a palace? It's as long as we're together. You are a very astute woman, Mrs. Marchbank. <laughs> Just careful. Once bitten, and I have been several times. What are you talking about? It's the name, Ron. Marchbank. You'd be surprised. You wouldn't believe how many unscrupulous gold diggers there are out there. So, I pretended that I had nothing. Waited to see if I could find somebody who wanted me, just for myself. Somebody who would be happy to give up everything and move into my mother-in-law's house because he thought it was mine. Somebody who wanted me, not my bank balance. You know, Ron, it was like a series of little tests, really, wasn't it? which some people failed miserably, I'm afraid. But then one kind and wonderful man passed with flying colours. Please don't be angry with me, David. OK. I 
again, you don't have to answer these questions, but has the baby's father suffered from any serious diseases? No. Has he had any previous children? Four. Any birth deformities, congenital diseases? No. Down syndrome. The youngest was a Down's baby. Okay. Okay, well, good. Your in sample's okay, blood pressure's fine. So if you'd like to pop along to the ultrasound department now, it's out through the main doors and just follow the signs. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Bye. The heating bills are half the national debt, but uh, you can't have everything. Oh, I think you can. And I think I have. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh! <gasps> Come in, Ron. Come in out of the cold. Jacqueline Dixon. With you in a moment. Hop onto the bed. Oh, thanks. What was all that mad stuff about moving to Chester? Oh, I'm sorry. I should have warned you. Susanna, I am not moving anyway. We all have to as soon as you begin to show. I've got a business to run. What? Like you mean you want me to go into hiding for months on end? Righty ho. Okay. Push your trousers down a little. Yeah. Sis, I'm going to wipe some jelly on your tummy. You've never mentioned any of this before. It's maybe a little cold. <laughs> Ron? <laughs> Ron, oh, son, we're having drinks in the drawing room. Oh, drinks in the drawing room. How nice. <laughs> Have you seen it? Have you seen the library? <laughs> Come on. Hold on. I owe you. There are two Reynolds in the dining room, would you believe? There you go. Huh? Oh, forget it. Come on, Bing, take it. You want that £20 fair and square. <laughs> All right. And the rest of it. Makes you want to spit, though, doesn't it? All of this could have been mine. The portraits, rolling acres, dogs. Bloody lot. Gone over my arm, G and T before lunch. <laughs> Millions in the old bank account. <laughs> well, come and have a G and T with us now, eh? Give us a sec, eh? Look, oh son, um, the bungalow. You know you're welcome to stay there for as long as you need to. Until it's sold, eh? Well, yes, that builder chap did seem actually quite keen, but until then. Not quite pressing him all, though, is it, Bing? <laughs> well, look. Join us for a drink, yes? When you're ready. Cheers. <laughs> Bing, listen, um, thanks for the offer, but I think I'll just... Tell them I had a prior engagement, will you? Baby's fine. Developing normally. Good heartbeat. Is it... Um, <clears throat> is it possible to tell what sex the baby is? No, not yet. Not till week 20. Can I... Uh, can Jackie have a look? In a sec. Just a couple more measurements.
there's the baby's head. There's an arm. Your baby should be about two inches long now. So tiny. It's moving. <laughs> it's moving, it's alive. I should hope so. See, there's its face. Oh. So there you are, Jacqueline. There's your baby. Say hello. Friday evening worship begins in a couple of minutes with Ellen, followed by Father Ted and Fraser. And at 10.30, look out for a great episode of King of the Hill.